Hello and welcome to the latest uh, YouTube broadcast. Uh, what I want to relate to you in this broadcast is something I did uh, a few weeks ago in London. Uh, if you've been watching my YouTube broadcast, particularly the Christmas broadcast and the New Year broadcast, you will know that I've been talking about something called a free man. A man who is free under the common law, the common law of God. That when we are born we are sold into slavery by our parents because they sign a birth certificate. But because you are a creation of God with free will, you're entitled to uh, discontinue your consent to be part of their society. And when I say their society, I'm talking about a corporation that we think of as a country. All the uh, legislation that comes out of that corporation is subject to the common law. So if you say you want to rely upon your common law rights, they have to respect that. And then when you go to a courtroom, you ask a judge if he's under his oath. If he's not under his oath, you're perfectly entitled to walk out. If he is under his oath, he is what's known as a Melchizedek priest, a priest of the Order of the Righteous Messenger. And when he sits there as a Melchizedek priest, uh, he has to do his duty to God. So if he refuses to allow you to bring in evidence or make your argument, as judges have done in Britain, he will be in violation of God's law and you can sue him in another court. Of course, what happens is when you go into court these days, you go not into a law court, but a court of law. And the judge there is sitting as what is known as a Levitical priest, a priest of the ancient code of Babylon, of the uniform commercial code. And believe it or not, and you'll wonder why people haven't told you this, particularly people, of course, in the mainstream media, is he is there actually to make money out of you. He's there to put you in prison, because in prison you become more profitable to them. They can raise more bonds on you and therefore raise more credit on the back of you. However, that has all changed now. The Uniform Commercial Code is over. If we go back to ancient times, we've all heard of something called the Ark of the Covenant. Now, some people have imagined that this is the object they describe, but actually the primary meaning of the Ark of the Covenant, rather like the Holy Grail, is it is a metaphor for the Messiah. Because when this covenant was signed between God and man, it appeared that God incarnated, or Jesus incarnated, whatever you want to call him, was not going to be there. Now, of course, we know that Jesus has reincarnated, but it's been kept secret over the millennia. However, to most people, it appeared that God wasn't there, so the agreement that man made with God was to operate God's laws in his absence, under the principle of do as you would be done by, and the Ten Commandments, using the Bible to illustrate your arguments. However, man violated that law. The Uniform Commercial Code is built upon the lending of money at interest, the law of usury, and this is a violation of the Ten Commandments. So it came to a point where I was researching this law and I realised that everybody in the 144,000 is a priest in the order of Melchizedek. Therefore they can sit as a judge in judgment of God's law. And I realised through my research in the Bible that all the common law points towards the one true heir. The arrival, in fact, of God incarnated as a man again. So that Ark of the Covenant only lasted until I, as God incarnated as a man, came along and told people that. Now obviously I have issued executive orders and I wondered whether they would follow them or not. There is some evidence these have been followed. However, I wondered how I could actually claim my authority in the law. And again, I read the Bible. And perhaps the most famous story we know in the Bible is when Jesus turns the table on the moneylenders. Now, of course, we'll have many interpretations of this story. Some people will say that was the failure of Jesus' mission because he turned over the tables and became violent. But as with all of these things, if we look at the actual words used and we bring to bear knowledge from different sources, we come up with a very different interpretation. The reason that Jesus goes to the temple is because that's where laws practice, the law of God. But the problem was, of course, the judge sitting by the table was sitting in the temple and not practicing the law of God. He was practicing the law of usury, the law of money lending. And what Jesus did was not turn over the tables violently on him. He turned the tables metaphorically, because once he stood there and said, I am the Lord Jesus Christ and I claim ultimate authority in law, he turned the table on the judge. Jesus was the judge and the judge was the judge. Now, in my research, and because of the experiences I've had, and believe me, Jesus will take you through all sorts of experiences to prepare you for what you need to do in the divine plan. Now, of course, I was taken to court on several occasions by the government. 
So on many occasions I had actually been to the High Court, the Law Courts, the Royal Courts of Justice. But when you do a bit more research, you actually realise that the Royal Courts of Justice are in an area of London called the Outer Temple, just near the old Templar Church, basically. So I knew exactly what I had to do. I even knew the day on which I had to do it, and that day is Judgment Day.